Hello and welcome to the not quite so locked down bunker. People still get really stirred up about the Nazis. They're right, of course. It's really important that we should be on the lookout for anything similar and it could certainly happen again in some form. And on the rare occasions when I put something on Twitter about appeasement, for instance, the likes and retweets come rushing in like a flood. And if you stir football into the mix, it's overwhelming. You see, the other day I tweeted something about the anniversary of the England-Germany football match of 1938, when the horrible stuffy old British ambassador in Berlin, Sir Neville Henderson, insisted that the whole team should give the Nazi salute before it started so as to keep Hitler happy. So there they are in this shameful black and white photo, standing in a line in their baggy shorts, holding their right arms out, looking like real wallies. Not that it was their fault, poor chaps. They did what they were told. Only one member of the team, Stan Cullis, refused to give the Nazi salute to his great credit. And he wasn't only dropped that day, he was never picked for England again. Still, he did become the famously successful manager of Wolverhampton Wanderers, so it all ended fairly well. Oh, and England wiped the floor with Germany in the match, by the way. Anyway, that tweet of mine brought loads of shocked comments, again rightly. Keeping on doing what Hitler wanted, managed to persuade him that we were feeble and would do absolutely anything for a quiet life. I feel real shame about the picture of the England team. And like most of us, I disapprove intensely of Neville Henderson, the impeachment ambassador, and his boss, the other Neville, Neville Chamberlain. But 82 years later, they make an easy target. We know they were wrong. But have we learned the lesson as well as we like to think? In the current Spectator magazine, there's a fascinating article about David Cameron's controversial meeting with the Dalai Lama in 2012. The writer says that after the hoo-ha died down and Cameron had issued what was in effect an apology for it to China, British and Chinese officials finally met to talk about trade and the Chinese side insisted that before the talks could go any further, the Brits had to read David Cameron's apology out loud. Well, that's what the spectator says. Could well be true, though it's the first time I've heard of it. China is a magnificent country, which I like very much, but no one, not even the Chinese government, suggests it's a democracy in our sense of the word. It's a hugely powerful country which can get extremely nasty if you criticise it or do something it thinks goes against its interest. Yet, I don't often find that people talk angrily about appeasement in relation to China. Most seem to want to keep on good terms with it. That photo of the England team with their right arms stuck out in front of them like branches is still hugely embarrassing to this day. I wonder if there's a photo of the British officials reading out the apology about the meeting with the Dalai Lama. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, goodbye.